everyone can everyone hear me let me know <laughs> oh my goodness we're back for another week of fun looking at this really awesome awesome show gargoyles that was um i think it was around from 1994 to 1997 really good stuff guys i really enjoy this uh series let's see <laughs> <laughs> yes, Keith E says that he can hear me. Wonderful, wonderful. Let me get to the greetings for today. First up, we've got Maria Kelly. So great to see you. Maria Kelly says, good evening, everyone. How are all of you? Says, I just watched the Star Trek uh, musical episode, Subspace Rhapsody, and I didn't know if I'd like it, but it was terrific. Oh, wow. Um, uh, and I guess SNW means uh, new worlds, I think. Strange new worlds. Yeah. <laughs> I am I am out of the loop of the new stuff. And I think, I think you know what? <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. I, I usually wait till things get nice and seasoned and retro uh, before I watch them. But if you're saying that's really good, I think I might give it a watch then. I might give it a watch. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> and uh oh no keithy <laughs> said i got banned from a channel i told them their video they made was horrible <laughs> oh no <laughs> well hang in there hang in there uh hopefully my videos will be just uh <laughs> much better than than those ones uh unicorn rampant studio is here says good evening rng and mama bear art doll so good to see you unicorn hope you're enjoying a wonderful uh wonderful day and evening thank you for being here i know this is rather late for you guys keithy and, and unicorn <laughs> Really appreciate it. And Stuntbrat is here. This is my sweet retro girl hugs. Thank you. <laughs> so good to to be here. I I had I mean it was it was Easter, but it felt like Christmas. Uh, thanks to you, Stuntbrat. So <laughs> it was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, yes, and uh, Unicorn it shares my sentiments exactly. I I hope they didn't hurt your feelings because I know that could be really hard. Um, you know, uh, I've, I've certainly, it's happened to me as well. <laughs> and not, no one gets away w out of life without being banned at least once. Uh, and let's see. And, uh, you know, corn is sending out hugs and so is stunt brat. Let's see. Uh, and Keith A says, uh, if they truly knew me and what I do, they they should they would be embarrassed. Oh. And uh Unicorn says, I, I mean in all fairness, you can see the visible invisible hippo unless you know him personally, it might not have had the same impress in, impression on outsiders. Uh and um uh, some bride is sharing her experience too. I got banned once for using too many caps. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, capital letters will do that. Uh, people don't like capital letters. Um, let's see. <laughs> and Keithy is saying, thanks. This is all very funny. Oh, you're so sweet. Um, and I wanted to also specifically thank you, Keith E. I rewatched um, the uh, watch party for um what movie was it that we watched um for the crow and let me just tell you you were so awesome in the chat uh just making sure that people were liking and telling people about the next shows and stuff i really appreciate that stuff because i do forget so thank you so very much for all that you do behind the scenes so thank you so much thank you <laughs> and uh Maria Kelly says, hello, Retro Girl and Mama Bear. So good to see you. Um, oh, and there she is. There's Mama Bear. Our doll says, Strange in the World is a series the fans campaigned for after seeing Anson Mount as Pike. Ooh. Yeah, he is a pretty, a pretty good looking guy. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, and Maria is saying that you should watch this season. Uh, uh, watch this. It's season two, episode nine. Oh, okay. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, 
And Lance Chafin is here. Says hi, RNG. Hello, Lance. How are you? Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Keith e says, I tried to tell him I was a veterinary girl person, but it carried no weight. <laughs> Hey, look, Osha Fresh is here. What up, Retro Nerd Girl and Mama Bear Art Doll? So good to see you. Let's see. Wow. The gang's all here. Let's see. And uh, Stunt Red says, uh, Retro, that was so fun. Does the Barbie sweatshirt fit? Of course. It's nice and cozy and soft. And oh, it's really nice. It's really nice. Thank you so much. Yes. It is very it fits very well it's it's baggy but it's that's you know that's how it's supposed to be right you know <laughs> and uh, maria kelly says anson mount stole season two from of discovery right out of song sonquia martin green but she's uh she's good too okay so those are two different shows. See, I'm, I'm really late on my, my Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> I, I kind of lost track of Star Trek uh, after 2009. Uh, I, was, I still didn't get over what they did to my characters. And so uh, I, I need to get over it and watch some of this new stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, Maria Kelly, thank you for letting me know about this. This is really good to know. Um, uh, you know about these shows because I, I kind of uh, I'm lost in my own little retro world here. <laughs> and Mama Bear says, "A hundred percent. That's why I was part of the campaign." Oh wow, you were part of that campaign too. Wow, cool. <laughs> and so Red says that Keith rocks, and he's a. Uh, He's a truly a retro nerd girl person. Oh, you're you're just incredible. You really are. And Lance is saying, "Way to go, Keith!" Yes, absolutely. Uh, and, and you know what? That I should do this. This is what I should do uh, because this is what I uh, usually do to to say thank you to my mods for for helping me out, uh, as I certainly do always need it. Um, Maria Kelly says she wants Anson Mount to be James Bond. That's pretty cool. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I know they picked somebody, but I could have sworn that Barbara Broccoli said that they weren't working on Bond stuff for a while. I, she must have lied to the public because she said it like maybe four weeks ago, and now all of a sudden we have a, a new Bond. Very interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. Uh, the news is uh, very interesting. And Jack is here. How are you doing, Jack? Really good to see you. Says hello from Texas. Can't stay. Hit the like button and feed the algorithm. Thank you. That's really sweet of you to tell people to do that. Thanks so much. <laughs> oh, man. And Step Brad says, uh, "I'm so glad. Yes, it do, it fits wonderfully. I've been loving it. And um, uh, and this here, I've been just loving this right here. This is <laughs> this is my new everything. I'm just like, really, I want that. I want that. I want that. Because <laughs> they're going through all of the different um, Barbie things, and it's uh, uh, it's just so good. And um, Mama Bear Arto says he'd be a great Anson Mount. You think he would be a great Bond? I, maybe, yeah." Um, I, he's definitely, oh, you know, he's got the looks for it. So I think so. I, I think I had like a crush on him like a few years back, but, um, I, I grew out of it, <laughs> but he's still wonderful. I think he's great. <laughs> um, and, um, Maria Kelly says, you're quite welcome. And Keith A says, I had to wait online to hit, uh, to hit Al Gore and I live in Tennessee. Oh. 
Oh, oh, Al Gore is in, in Tennessee? <laughs> That's news to me. <laughs> and Mama Bear says, I know the J. Abrams verse had problems, but it had Lennon, Leonard Nimoy, uh, Le Leonard Nimoy's approval, and that's good enough for me. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I had some, I had some big problems with the whole thing. Um, I'll go into it one day and like rant. <laughs> it's probably one of the few things that I rant about is that, and uh, uh, Terminator is usually another thing that I will rant about, but. Oh gosh, yeah, I have some serious issues, but um, yeah, it, I, I think I think um, they've moved forward with a whole, you know, the whole universe after that, and so at some point, you know, either I'm sure there's got to be something in there that's that's good, so I'm I'm willing to give it a chance um, along the the way, but uh. <laughs> And uh, Mar Maria Kelly says, Unpopul "Unpopular opinion. I thought Star Trek Into Darkness was a great remake of Star Trek Two: Wrath of Khan." Oh, okay. I, I, you know, I didn't see that one. Um, uh, uh, and Mom Bear says, "I cheered when Cumberbatch said my name. Uh, uh, my name is Khan." Oh, really? <laughs> yes, he has such a wonderful voice. <laughs> All right, then we're we'll get a um, get started with this incredible thing. So, guys, remember last week we weren't able to finish because um, the video got cut off, and so this week I have the restored rest of that. And so we're just gonna go ahead and do the entire episode four, season two, for you. It's actually a wonderful episode. And I did want you guys to miss it because it was so good and so then right after that we're gonna start in to um the what would have been <laughs> you know uh week five with uh episode five six seven and eight um and that that will be really cool and we've got one more comment <laughs> mama Bear says carl urban is definitely a highlight as bones oh my god he's he was really good he was really good <laughs> um i i another a crushable uh, person right there very crushable very crushable all right so guys are you ready for it we're um, gonna get started uh there isn't sort of an introduction or anything we just dive right into it so uh I i'm gonna uh throw that uh get started with it right now for another great episode mm -hmm. a lighthouse in the sea of time Isn't that such a fantastic name Yes, yes. This, I really loved it. We start off the episode with two archaeologists that, uh, that have found some scrolls. I was trying to get a picture of the scrolls, but I couldn't get one. Uh, but there are two scrolls. They are the scrolls of Merlin. Elisa is also working on a project to protect these scrolls when mm. two fighter jets come in and they attack and manage to get their hands on the two scrolls. But one of the scrolls gets into the hands of Hudson, who goes missing. He falls into the river and then gets washed up on shore. And a man by the name of Jeffrey Robbins actually takes him in and, and, and keeps him safe. Jeffrey Robbins is blind. And he's a, he's mm -hmm. a writer. He's blind. And this is where we find out that Hudson can't read. Yeah. Because yeah, the, the, when they announced the, the scrolls, you see like pretty much everybody reading and with the exception of Broadway and Hudson and They're Broadway's like, well, it's just a bunch of books. We've got all the action we need on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. Now, don't you think Hudson? Hudson's like, ah, keep me out of it, lad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's come, great. Come Bronxy with celebrity hockey. <laughs> Actually, I think that's what it was. <laughs> Which, which I, 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 I was so impressed because they have been setting this up since the beginning with him being so fascinated by television. Mm. And I was like, wow, they, 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 they've really thought about this. This was such a wonderful revelation. I, I don't know. I just, I just love that. I, I love books personally. Uh, it, it was kind of nice how they, they made books become a, a part of the storyline with Goliath's love of books. And mm. then we have, uh, you know, Hudson all this time 
we were like, we weren't sure why he was watching TV so much it was because he could not read. And uh, that's wild. Uh, yeah, that that just, that blew my mind. The Gargoyles are looking for Broadway who, and Hudson. Broadway and Hudson, was, because Broadway has been kidnapped uh, by none other than Macbeth. Yeah, he, he held on to the one plane trying to get the one canister. At this point, you, we, you've got, I think it's uh, Goliath keep keep going back and forth. Or oh yeah, at first he you know he Owen sends him on like with a little smirk sends him on this like wild goose chase. Owen and eventually <laughs> yeah eventually he's like yeah all of Mister Xanatos's fancy pants planes that act like helicopters they're all in the shop. <laughs> You might want to check out Macbeth. He seems to be kind of the one who's guiding people in the right direction, no doubt. He's <laughs> so, clearly doing this for fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I'm like, okay, so what part does Xanatos have in all of this is, mm. is always my question. But and this um, time, nothing. Nothing, right? He didn't have anything to do with it this time. Owen was just, just bored and having fun trolling them. <laughs> We all have and, those um, moments. <laughs> yeah, and and what I thought was really cool was um, at dawn, Hudson was like, "Okay, well, uh, it's nice meeting you. Uh, I'll have, I'll come back." And he goes outside, and because the man is blind, he doesn't see that Hudson turns into a statue he heard it, alongside. Though. Say it again. He heard it though. He heard it. He heard it. That was in, That was fascinating. Yeah, even he going heard back it. watching it again, that was fascinating. Yeah, he heard it, and Macbeth is able to track him. And I thought it was really cool that he called himself Lennox Macduff, which is a, which again is two characters two from the play yeah. Macbeth. And that was the way that they were able to find his address. And Macbeth plans to use the scrolls' magic, and he's going to test it on Broadway. He has one of the scrolls, and he really needs them. He needs to read them in order. Now, the first scroll is with Hudson, so he needs that scroll. So he, he manages to get both scrolls. Once he opens it and starts reading it, it's actually just Merlin's diary, which is yeah. hilarious. At that point, he's like, he doesn't even need it anymore. He's so pissed. Uh, <laughs> diary, where are the spells? Dude, Merlin's diary. How is this not still exciting? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, go, just burn it. And they were like, no. I guess through the entire experience, Jeffrey, who revealed earlier in the story that he was losing his excitement for writing. Writing, yeah. He had a like sort of a, a writer's block. And uh, this whole experience it got him uh, excited about writing again. <laughs> and uh, it was kind of nice. I like the, the ending was of him sitting down reading. Oh, was he reading or was he writing? He was writing. He was writing. This and is also of, where like Hudson gets introduced to not only regular books, but Braille as Braille, well. Braille, yeah. I, I love it. And Hudson even admits to the other gargoyles that he can't re read. And I don't know if they they all knew that, but... it's. It, I don't know if it's just, just me, but it really seemed like Goliath, you know, kind of had an idea. Uh, yeah. So casually goes, uh, well, before we return it to Elisa, we could... I, I could read it to the two of you. Ah. Uh. I love that. Yeah, I did love that. You know um, that 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 heartwarming moment of of Hudson going, "Nah, we'll we'll read it ourselves after we after we learn." Yeah. No, it's going to be under lock and key by that point. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be in a museum. Practical side hopefully. of me, sorry. <laughs> yeah, hopefully in a museum. Uh, but he is. Yeah, I I did love that. There is this concentration in the story of. Books, Shakespearean tales, Merlin, magic, that kind of stuff was really, it, this, this is like juices for the imagination, you know? So I do mm -hmm. love, I do love all that. And wow, what a way to end it. Um, the One of the last things Jeffrey says in the episode, he says, books are the lighthouses erected on the dark sea of time. Okay. That that whole I don't know if it's on YouTube, <laughs> yeah. but the episode itself is fantastic. Mm -hmm. But that whole speech he that Jeffrey gives at the end is incredible. 
that should be binge watched like yes. over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> it, it it is. I mean, uh, it, it's so pretty. I don't know. It, it, I'm I, I'm just loving the way that this series is written. It really has a lot of magic to it. And when I say magic, I mean you know lore, charm. They they try to add drama, whimsy. Uh, they they did it all. What a what a great show. Mm -hmm. The whole, in the whole time, they're, they're working in these classic literary novels. Yeah. Like even when at the the first one that we were talking about, Fox is reading in prison, and sorry, Heine looks at her and goes, "Well, why do you read that?" Well, because you know Nietzsche's too butch, and Voltaire reminds me of your little friends there, like suggesting to the cockroaches. <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> yeah incredible incredible yeah. right i'm here with mama bear art doll and we are reviewing gargoyles uh season two episode five six seven and eight and, and these were truly uh exciting episodes um let's see if i can get my visual up here and the first one up is the mirror episode which was quite fun so it starts off with a mirror at a at a museum and just so happens that Elisa is undercover guarding the, this museum I think maybe she's got a tip off or anything or something but she she's there protecting it and then Demona suddenly bursts in, and she and Goliath are going at it like crazy. <laughs> they uh, they uh, go off into the distance, and everybody thinks, okay, they've chased her away from this this mirror, and the mirror is safe. However, two robbers come in and steal the mirror while it's unguarded, and then it turns out that those guys were actually hired by Demona. Who planned the whole scheme, which I thought was brilliant. That, that is, that's pretty uh, uh, insanely brilliant to to kind of know what your opponent is going to do and still trick them. Uh, mm -hmm. What did you think about that uh, that moment? That does show just the amount of experience that she does have. It does hint at it that yeah. she knew very well that they would be there, that they would be tracking her down. Oh yeah. And she led them for her to lead them away and let her other and let her minions, lack of a better, <laughs> follow out. That that was that was very impressive and a lot of you know scary foresight to it. Almost scary, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. I I've these last couple of episodes is really detailing Demona as a real threat. But also mm. someone who's 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 using her intellect in in many ways. We have Xanatos who's who's really super sneaky and smart, but mm. then she's got you know her own set of skills in the magical realm. She's been uh, studying behind closed doors. It seems um, at this point we don't. I, I don't know for sure. You probably know, uh, yeah. but <laughs> it, it, she, I, you can tell. Like she knows all of these magical objects and she's ready to kind of use them in her, you know, whatever devious plan she has. Mm -hmm. So the mirror is Tutania's mirror, the queen of the third race of Oberon's children, which is also related to Shakespeare. And in this episode, we learn that Elisa is very well versed and the stories of Shakespeare. So I just do <laughs> love that, that, um, that of course, we, we talked about the, the emphasis on books and reading in the past that was revealed in a lot of the other episodes. And here it's also in, interwoven again. Uh, I love that this is a continued theme that is going on in these stories. Uh, yeah, just mm -hmm. so impressed, so impressed. Demona summons Puck, who is a is named after a trickster in Shakespeare's plays. Uh, she commands him to get rid of all of the humans. Uh, well, it, then she takes it back and she says, well, just Elisa will do, uh, that human in particular. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. Elisa gets turned into a gargoyle 
and has no memory of ever being a human. So it's it's very interesting uh, how they avoid one tricky element in, in this story is like the panic of suddenly being turned into a a creature. She doesn't think anything of of the fact that she's turned into an, a gargoyle. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to tell Puck to get rid of all of the humans now. And again, turn he just decides to turn them all into gargoyles. Uh, so now he, he did do his job. He did get rid of all the humans, and he turned them all into <laughs> to gargoyles. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, this is definitely not what Demona wanted. She it it doesn't appease her at all so very unhappy with this demona says okay turn all gargoyles into human and at first i was like what wait a minute that doesn't make sense but this was her attempt to undo what was done she meant the gargoyles that were she previously meant the, like, the, the, the formerly humans yes it, and she she as brilliant as she is i just want to interject here because as no, brilliant sure. as she is she clearly forgets she's dealing with a trickster oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> so oh, yeah. he's doing this stuff on purpose and for those watch who have been watching along hopefully you did catch recognize his voice because that is brent spiner commander data from from star trek excellent job too yeah <laughs> excellent job too there yeah, there's a I mean... great gargoyle oh yeah i was like whoa we can we keep that <laughs> right and she just took to it very naturally, which was great. Every and every all the humans did. And th this episode itself, because you're showing her, you're showing them. And it raised one major question for me that never gets answered in the series. Mm -hmm. Why don't the gargoyles update their clothing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just in loincloths. I noticed that like <laughs> a little bit later. It's like, oh, they're just all they have is loincloths. <laughs> yeah. Even when, like, because she was alluding to it that when Demona says, you know, turn all the turn the gargoyles into humans, Puck, of course, does the trickster thing and uh -huh. he turns the gargoyles. Yes. Into uh, humans, yeah. Goliath it's and his buddies. Yeah, except for Demona, he didn't he didn't do her, but I he, I think and he, initially he didn't do initially he didn't do Bronx either. Yes, I was I was like, how come Bronx is not? How, how did? <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't have been a human, but yeah. My my only complaint about this episode, you know, is for the, for the artist. Why did you pick like a golden retriever? You know, oh, English yeah. hound type thing. He he was yeah, he was yeah. he spot on for a bulldog. <laughs> Oh yeah, a bulldog. I was I was thinking Rottweiler, but yeah, uh, something He's a little bit more. Frame, you know, yeah, like something a little bit more girthy and yeah, and uh, and intimidating. Yeah, when, um, when they change him into this like skinny little English Irish hound or whatever, it looks odd. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's there's a, a Goliath and his loincloth. And the, the really cool thing is that uh, these uh, the the gargoyles who are now humans uh, don't remember ever being gargoyles. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because Elisa has been primed uh, of just just previously, she's trying to to let them know, like, hey, there, there is something wrong here. And they know it. They know it. And they're like, but they just don't know what it is that's wrong. Uh, they're like, yeah, something isn't right here. But and I love this because when you have these humans turn into gargoyles, well, that would have turned the story into like pure panic, right? It would have been like people like losing their minds. You're a gargoyle. I'm a gargoyle. Like just pure pandemonium. And they avoided that by just um, dealing with like, hey, this is the world that we lived in and, and have has always lived in. And, it, and we were always gargoyles. Mm -hmm. I, I did love that that little detail uh, that, that kept the story kind of pure in a way. And it um, did make it easy for them to help add in that no you've been brainwashed in this th this like i know you this is what you believe but it's not the truth because you know goliath when we lisa first turns you know looks at her and says well how did we meet and she's like well you caught me and he's like if you've always been a gargoyle why did i need to catch you yeah yeah 
<laughs> in, in an interesting mirror, when the gargoyles get turned human, mm -hmm. Goliath is trying to teach Lisa how to fly. So he's oh, out there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just as he says, like, I'll always be there to catch you. Mm -hmm. Human. Yeah. So she and dives off and goes, catches him. Yeah. <laughs> she She's the one to catch him, which I thought was a wonderful reversal. Yeah. Um, there for it's appropriate with this title, right? Uh, it's just, it's really crazy. So these guys are smart writers. Simona discovers Puck has been mixing up all her requests and she's like super, super pissed. <laughs> like, and the clan, um, they decide, okay, we're gonna go to a place where Demona is going to be a little less able to use her at one advantage, which is wings, right? So they go to Rockefeller Center, which is kind of cool to see their version of Rockefeller Center. And maybe Demona, that's when you could explain because when I was in New York, I didn't get to Rockefeller Center. Oh. How is that area make it harder for her to use her wings? Not really. I mean, it's on, it's on the ground it, it, level. Yeah, it. it everything i've seen like movies t you know whatnot <laughs> it looks like an open air space so that wouldn't be my first thought <laughs> yeah because you could have a gust of wind come in right and mm -hmm. and change things but you have the ground level here and then it kind of recesses a little bit okay um so so maybe that's what they were thinking mm -hmm. uh it, as long if she we, you can get her a, a little bit below ground level maybe it'll be a place where she can't use her wings I bought it for us, you know, for a little made, while. But... Made for a great backdrop. It's just yeah. Oh, yes. if there's some sort of like detail behind that choice mm -hmm. that locals only would know, would have been a nice bit of information to add. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think like that would be my only thing is that it is a recess in the ground, and mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think. I mean, if there was a strong wind, it could come down there. It's it's still easy for her to be up top somewhere and just swoop down. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I don't know. It was it was a it was like interesting, clever. So, uh, but also maybe a misstep on that on that one. I, we're we're still trying to figure it out. Uh, if anyone knows, please leave um, some uh, a, a little note in the comments there. When the humans see, well, the hum the people who used to be humans that are now gargoyles see the humans, they're like, oh my God, the, those monsters. are the monsters. Yeah. And so uh, sort of like calling back to the first couple of episodes, mm -hmm. they're like, oh yeah, we're the monsters. And so it, they give them, it gives them the upper hand to kind of fend off these, uh, these creatures. And the reason why they are, they need to be fended off is because they see t the humans are attacking or, or the, the gargoyles that used to be human, but they're attacking Demona and they're like, they're trying to hurt that lady. <laughs> you don't know how bad she is. Let them get her. <laughs> so it was really interesting. At least they were trying to be helpful. Their, I guess, prejudices against monsters got the better of them. Uh, after um, a battle, thanks to Elisa, Puck turns everything back to the way it was before Demona summoned him. He does that in exchange for his freedom. But what is it really gets me is that when Puck leaves and takes the mirror back to Demona's place. Before he leaves, he curse well, gives her a curse or a gift. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what it is, <laughs> but uh, she is uh, gonna be a human during the day and a gargoyle at night. Which she thought, does say in the, when she first meets Puck, she does express that she doesn't wanna be vulnerable during the day, ah. which is why he turns around and gives her this, this gift, which is, it's Puck. There's always a twist to it. There's always a twist. <laughs> I love it. I'm like, when do you get some sleep, girlfriend? <laughs> That's, again, we'll never quite answer. <laughs> yeah. But I did love this, this little fight between the two of them. I was like, whoa. Uh, Alisa was really giving Demona a, a run for her money. Yeah, and, yeah she... Um, as a as a gargoyle, previously she was just able to really wreck anybody else up, except for she couldn't really do anything with Goliath. 
uh, but she, she really did have a, a superiority against pretty much all of the other gargoyles. So that means that Elisa, if she became a, a gargoyle permanently, could possibly be, you know, uh, second to Goliath as far as strength goes. So I, mm -hmm. I did love that. And uh, <laughs> I, I, and the visual here of Puck using his powers, I was like, cool. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> very, uh, very creative and very haunting, huh? very haunting as well. So uh, yeah, poor uh, Devona just can't get her wishes done correctly with this. Um, this mirror. It's the problem when dealing with tricksters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and of course, um, it ends with a little huggy, huggy poo with <laughs> Elisa getting closer to to yeah. Goliath, just a little, just a little. They, and they leave it off with that he wanted to say something, and just and the, and the sunrise comes up, and she's like, "It's the way it is." Yeah, yeah, but there, there's, there's definitely a budding something going on there. And I'm I'm actually here for it. I don't mind any uh, interspecies relationships uh, for for the two of them. They seem to yep. really have something special. And so the next episode is uh, uh, season two, episode six, the Silver Falcon, which is very kind of has a very old school vibe to it. It starts off with Broadway watching an old detective show on. The, the TV show, but um, actually, before that, there is a previously on that kind of tips us off to what the show is going to end mm. up being about, which is definitely re rekindling or re um, uh, letting us know about what happened with Dracon in the earlier episodes, and it, they also let us know about Matt, Elisa's uh, partner, mm -hmm. and uh, Matt is out on a at a deserted place and following up on some clues and it is actually a trap. And so he gets captured. So uh, while Broadway is watching this show, Elisa gets a call that Matt has been missing for 48 hours. And Broadway's, you know, hears about this and he's like, oh, please let me, you know, let me come along. <laughs> he's so cute. And Elisa's partner. like, yes, <laughs> he, he just wants to help. And Elisa's like, no, I don't think you're ready for it. I don't think you're, you should come out. I mean, technically, he is a teenager, you know, mm -hmm. mentally, and so I think I think she's you know trying to consider all of that and trying to keep him safe. But she she ends up going to Matt's apartment, but uh, Broadway is actually inside, and she he's overseeing that there is somebody inside the apartment going through all of Matt's things already there. And when Elisa comes to the door he notices that this guy is, you know, he's got a gun and he's going to do something probably terrible. So he, um, when Elisa walks in through the door, Broadway is pretty much uh, man manhandling him. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, it, it's really quite interesting because it looks like he's following her, but he's actually protecting her and saved, possibly saved her life, you know? Definitely. Um, and uh, whoever it was that was in the apartment rigged the computer. Oh gosh, to blow yes. up. And yeah. Broadway acts really fast, grabs both of them when the guy reacts and goes no, and flies up and takes them out the window. And she's still trying to send them home after that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you, you need him. <laughs> Clearly, you need him. <laughs> Yeah, and I thought he was. I thought he was great. They made a great team together, mm -hmm. um, and um, they through this all this whole thing. Um, Elisa finds an appointment for Matt, but is when she goes to that appointment, she's greeted by uh, an FBI guy who is uh, and mentions her, uh, the Illuminati to her, uh, mm -hmm. and there's an uh, an old tip off about. Um, some things that Matt was working on. So uh, Matt somehow has connections with the FBI uh, that we didn't, we did not know about. Now, um, uh, unfortunately, the, the tr intruder returns for some payback uh, with a couple of goons, but um, luckily Broadway was following her and backs her up again. And so um, 
uh, Mace, this is all connected to uh, a character by the name of Mace Malone. And uh, she goes to his old office, 45D. And um, uh, from going to that place, there is another clue. And the next clue is DD, which is and the initials of somebody who was in connection with all of this. And then we discover a little bit later that uh, DD is Dominic Dracon. So uh, he was uh, Dracon's grandfather. So whatever mm -hmm. was going, that is how Dracon is connected to the story. So they go to this place where there, there's some guys digging for something. There's a huge scuffle and they get buried under ground during in this and digging kind of uh, excavation that they're doing and just as they were about to save themselves of course the sun comes up and broadway turns into stone <laughs> so really, i was like no <laughs> when that happened i was like oh man i do i love that aspect of this show like all of a sudden, uh, while they're doing stuff, they're doing things, they're, the, the night ends and the sun is up. That What are you going to do? Like sometimes the adventures go past dawn. Mm -hmm. And this is really um, where I was really worried that something terrible was going to happen. But uh, Elisa had the foresight to uh, kind of mask the fact that, that Broadway was down there. And... Mm -hmm. um, it actually kind of buries him in there a little bit more uh, in order to protect him. And um, when she comes out, she's greeted by this guy. <laughs> and there, you know, his his schemes that he's, he's trying to get this silver falcon, which is an object that Mace and uh, Dominic's grandfather stole. And uh, it looks like Mace was very skillful at creating decoys because even this dig site is a is a decoy as well mm -hmm. and uh i was like wow so somebody was thinking about all of the many ways to create these dips and valleys for the characters i do love that dd was dub double crossed by mace all this time he's just pretending to be someone else so he can get his hand uh, on the silver falcon yeah, I've been trying, I've been racking my brain because I know this is all like, uh, I'm paying homage to an old, one of those old Hollywood detective movies. Yes. And I'm, I'm, I know it's like something Falcon and I, I have uh, seen uh, so many cartoon versions that I can't get the, the right name in my head. Oh, is it the Falcon Mal Maltese or? That's it. The Maltese oh, Falcon. cool. A <laughs> Maltese Falcon. Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming, gonna come together eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know if anyone would be able to bring it up, it would you. <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is great. Like we're we're getting callbacks. It's really um, clever, as we can see. Like they don't they don't hit it out of the ballpark for every single thing, but I I do love these creative little touches that they're doing here, and it's just gonna it's like really. I don't know. I, I love this episode. Elisa makes a deal and tells them where she thinks that the Silver Falcon will be and gets them cleverly to wait until sunset, which I thought I was like, okay, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. <laughs> well, when they found out that this place is a decoy, the, the, the note that was in there is right idea, wrong Falcon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. It was, it was really good. And Mace is from... Possibly, we we believe beyond the grave is just taunting these guys, <laughs> just messing with them so hardcore. I was wondering, like, you know, if he was going to use it in any fashion, or it was just uh, he just wanted to keep it out of their hands. Mm -hmm. So that that's um, that's something else I, that I was wondering. Broadway wakes up to find the note that May slap he gets the idea oh i know where this is going to be i know exactly where they, they are show that so, he's been practicing his reading too so that that's fantastic oh yes i forgot he, about he that was, oh, he was so sweet. it out and that is like you are practicing that's awesome <laughs> yeah yeah that's so great because um yeah if we if we just remember how back far back Macbeth, we, when we meet macbeth both broadway and hudson admitted they couldn't read yeah yeah and, and they were both gonna learn 
Mm -hmm. And they were the ones that were the most addicted to TV. <laughs> 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 and so the the real DD, uh, you know, which is the the old man that was at mace malone's office is finally caught all these years so the police uh, you know he's turned in the lesson here is crime doesn't pay i i remember uh hearing the that quote and i'm like oh i guess that's the lesson that we learned today <laughs> yeah, that was literally the note that was waiting for him along with a whole bunch of really pretty marbles <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was like, what? <laughs> so we never do get to see the Falcon. Uh, I, I wonder if it's 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 got to be still out there somewhere, right? I don't believe we, I don't, I don't remember cycling back to this story. I think it was mm -hmm. just, uh, they were looking for a side story to, you know, bring in the whole Dracon Matt thing. Mm -hmm. And again, they, they, they do echo a lot of older hollywood movies and uh a lot of shakespeare <laughs> yeah 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 and which i, I absolutely adore mm. so yeah i wasn't able to get a whole lot of pictures for a lot of these but it's really great stuff i mean i i think they really tried to give us uh, a, a a nice adventure and mm. uh yeah this part really like got me so good i was like dag <laughs> That was, it was, it was, I thought it was over. I was like, oh, I hope he's going to be okay. Um, they really pulled at the, the strings there because they're so vulnerable in the statue form. And if those guys had seen, you know, that they could change into stone, it would be detrimental. And so I, I, I was very ner nervous about this. There's, there's D, that was D&D. &D, uh, mm. So the next one is uh, Gargoyles, uh, episode seven, Eye of the Beholder. My goodness. I have uh, been waiting to get to this one. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> so good. Oh, my goodness. It, it starts off with the previously on showing Xanatos and the Eye of Odin. And then it gives us a reunion with Fox. And so we get the, the idea. That's what the, the episode is going to be about. But it kind of goes off into another aspect when you you see um, right now they use the dates as sort of the anchoring point of this particular episode. So things start on October 1st when uh, Fox and Xanatos are having dinner and he decides to propose to her. And what a proposal it is. Let's get to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I have been waiting for this episode. This is this is one of my favorites. Oh of yeah, course. it's great. One, it's, one of <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, um, it it's very interesting. He's like we're genetically matched, and we have the same goals. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't beat that out for for romantic uh, proposals. <laughs> like wow you've thought about this you've gotten my yep. you you figured out that uh, my genetic path but then it's scary i don't know a <laughs> little, little bit how, how do you know we're genetically matched <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly um so yeah that that was a lot of fun i love the dialogue in this and uh I think one of them says what about love <laughs> Fox said and, that you know what about yeah. love and and uh, he says, I think we can, we love each other as much as uh, we're Everyone capable of loving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? Um, so this is the pinnacle of love for them. And um, I like the fact that they're, they're kind of diving into it. They're like, okay, let's go for this. And it seems corny and ridiculous, but in, in a strange way, it actually works. <laughs> And so um, we we learn about this a little bit more, but he gives her a very interesting engagement gift. It looks like a beautiful jewel, and and I think at this point I wasn't sure what it was. We um, we had seen it before. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the same one that he donated to the museum, and mm -hmm. it got stolen. By yes. A <laughs> which turned out to be him in the suit yeah and that was kind of the the only reference to that gift that we we knew so and the, after that we get abruptly um taken to october 
30th, which is uh, the night of where a werewolf or a wolf is attacking a store. He's been seen ever since October 5th. So people have been seeing him. It took five days and mm -hmm. um, we, you know, people started seeing this werewolf. And on most appearances, the werewolf looks like a, a guy, right? It looks like a male werewolf. It's is hard to tell. I mean, usually when, you know, when you think of <laughs> Yeah, think when you of, think of werewolves, you think of guys because they almost never do female werewolves. Yes, like and standardly, and this this is a um, a full on werewolf attack. Of course, I was into it because I do love werewolves. I do. I love a good werewolf. Is Elisa involved in this uh, uh, attack at all? Does she try to subdue the animal I in this one? Don't initially. No, I don't think so. Okay. She hears about it, and because it's something wacky, yeah, it, it's obviously got her her attention uh, on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she and, mentions it to Goliath, and you know, hey, this sounds like something up your alley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the unusual at the Castle Wavern, Xanatos has been saying that Fox has been acting really strange lately. And at first, I was like, oh my god, is she pregnant? <laughs> Yeah, she, she show they they sh they see her showing up, and all she's wearing is a trench coat, and that's very obvious. Obvious, all she's wearing, and <laughs> they don't even blink on it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so and I was like, was "Oh no, it's very, it's she's very." Like, well, I was just out for a walk with no with no shoes and nothing else. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and she's just really the way her her mannerisms at that point. There seems to be quite a bit of shame as to what's mm -hmm. going on. Uh, so she's really hiding it. She's there's an effort to hide it. On the thirty first, Elisa tells the clan about the werewolf. Also, Elisa and Goliath kind of share some feelings for each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's, <laughs> there's like Xanatos uh, is obviously worried. He's mm -hmm. test done some testings or whatever, and realizes that her body can't take this. Yeah, here's the the walk of shame that she <laughs> she does. <laughs> but he actually watches her transform into the werewolf, which I thought was, wow, this is great. Can I, you know, I can I just wanted to rewind that over and over and over again. And so he says that was plan A was to find out what she was going to do and then capture her, I suppose. And 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 I guess learn more about what's going on, but as this werewolf, she is so strong mm -hmm. that she easily overpowers him and easily gets out of any of the the traps he has for her. And at first, I thought, well, oh, he's giving her a tranquilizer, and I, no, he was just giving her a tracker. Um, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, I thought I thought you were gonna give her a tranquilizer to put her to sleep. Uh, so yeah, that doesn't that didn't really help. It's, it's really interesting what he says. He says that the necklace is supposed to bring out the person's innermost creature or a per mm -hmm. innermost self. And yeah. so for for her, it's a werewolf. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, this is this could be interesting here. Where, this would be um, a wear fox or something, you know, but <laughs> Yeah, yeah, or yeah, wear box, yeah, <laughs> and so, <laughs> so that was like sort of her spirit animal, and it being so powerful, and it, it's supposed to also give. He mentions this insight, and mm -hmm. so I was like, oh, this, you know, put in the right hands, this could be a really powerful weapon, uh, and I'm sure he would have loved to try, you know, to see what was revealed about himself if he put it on. But he says, uh, if he knew that the Eye of Odin contained that kind of power he would not have given it away and he referred to it as spilled milk he's like oh well spilled milk i was like you were insane <laughs> so and the more and more i'm thinking like this is really uh a cro like this is a crock he really only gave her that necklace as an experiment he didn't really love her he did the proposal but he really <laughs> didn't love her but um there, there's actually more to it because later on he's like okay so that didn't work so we, we're gonna go to plan b um and fox is being tracked and so is goliath i believe let me see yeah um, goliath uh comes over to confront them about 
this is this another one of your experiments because mm -hmm. at is just livid because you know she she's assuming this is another one like what happened to her brother yes yes you know you know xanatos not caring about other people doing his own thing mm -hmm. uh, his selfish curiosity whatever it is that he loves playing around and experimenting on people and running little games and tests but it unfortunately it, it is not connected and then when i say unfortunately is because that would how that would have helped uh elisa in some way try to like reach her, her her brother but it's not connected at all he discovers as you were saying that fox may be dying so there is an important need to search for her because she could die by the morning by that mm. morning um, yeah, her organs can't take this yeah yeah i it's think that's exactly what they say <laughs> yeah they do say that exactly and another thing is that she has to eat constantly to uh, in order to uh, burn off that energy uh, she has to keep on she has to keep on uh, eating constantly because uh she she's burning so much energy and xanatos actually you know he puts on his red uh steel clan outfit and and goes out and tries to help but um unfortunately fox is way too strong she's way too strong for him and was just about to kill him <laughs> pretty much but a small sliver of humanity came through and so yeah. this woman really does love him because she their her human side came out and literally saved his life so uh, I thought that was that was very interesting. Uh, that says that says a lot about Fox without you know telling us, uh, without her saying you know I love you. And Goliath and uh, Elisa, yeah, they they tried to to help as well, but it's not really doing any good. Because this werewolf form is so powerful mm -hmm. that it just it takes over. Uh, even even Goliath, what a formidable creature! I'm sure if it, there was a way to control that, and I'm sure they would they would do that because it's really like super powerful. And Xanatos uh, goes home and says that Plan B is no good, so let's go to Plan C. But what he doesn't know is that Plan C and was this is when bring Goliath in, and th this is when Goliath and Elisa show up, and they're like, uh uh <laughs> you got a plan one of your experiments yeah yeah, yeah. No, we're not helping you out <laughs> yeah yeah so then they go to plan d and um it's you know full of halloween and we got uh the uh, wonderful visual that i had before uh, elisa as uh bell and uh <laughs> goliath <laughs> being the beast i suppose and and, and the them, boys like, have a costume on top of it. i mean they, they didn't need to have a costume they could have walked yes. around as is but everyone loved the fact it was like oh a costume and a costume this is dope <laughs> yeah 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 i i did love that and uh just the, the the opportunity that they had to actually interact with people and not feel like they were so different you know so mm -hmm. I, I really felt for them in that moment. Goliath uh, mentions like, hey, maybe we should help Xanatos. I mean, he's noticing that there's there's something going on between Xanatos and, and Fox. So he really is starting to have feel like he has feelings for her. Not, yeah. that, not that he's sorry, but he does have feelings for her. Xanatos appears in the shadows and he's like, yeah, well, I've been tracking you. <laughs> 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 and um, they find Fox and finally working together as a team, they actually remove the eye of Odin from Fox, which I thought was, I was like, okay, teamwork. Uh, <laughs> it's really great. And Xanatos says, now that you know my weakness, he's really ashamed the fact that he really has feelings for Fox. Yeah. And uh, Goliath says, only you would regard love as a weakness. And it's like, uh-huh. <laughs> but... One of them even said, you've never looked more heroic. Because he's holding her, wrapped oh, up yeah. in Elisa's skirt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. My question was, was right after watching this, was, was Xanatos actually turning into a hero because of love? <laughs> then we get to episode eight and uh, we realize, oh no. <laughs> oh no, that was very short lived. Episode eight, season two. Um, I also love this 
uh, I mean, these are great episodes, right? <laughs> we got uh, uh, humans turning into gargoyles and gargoyles turning into humans, <laughs> and we got werewolves. And now uh, we got a little bit of time travel in this one. Um, and <laughs> I mean, what else can you ask for? This, they have everything in this show. Yep. Um, so this is um, uh, the I'm episode is, and the Illuminati. <laughs> the Illuminati, which they mentioned ever so slightly in episode episode five. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Matt, Matt Matt is very excited about it, and he he's one of those conspiracy theory type people, which is probably why he was. <laughs> hunting down when it comes to the <gasps> silver falcon and all of that jazz mm -hmm. we did get a previously on which they did talk about goliath and demona and their love story when they were in love back in the 900s and then we have this you know fox and xanatos how they are kind of a, a couple now so it starts um, off with <laughs> sorry i'm trying to remember the actor's name uh, that's Mark Shepard's father. He has been all over everywhere, um, including Star Trek multiple times, Doctor Who. In fact, he, him and his son, Mark Shepard, mm -hmm. played the same character in Doctor Who, oh. just in different decades. Oh, cool. <laughs> really cool uh yeah he he was great in this it starts off right away with with xanatos and goliath fighting each other it's like what's going on and it turns out Z xanatos is like wait 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 i just came here i wanted to invite you to be my best man at my wedding and it's like goliath is just not trusting of Xanatos, even still, even after finding out that there is a softer side to him, he just, just does not trust him. And with good reason. Xanatos' father is the first guest, and uh, he is really kind of a grumpy guy. He's a fisherman. He does not like David. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It, it's revealed that Xanatos' life was changed by receiving a, a $20,000 coin. And um, yeah, that was three million, something like that. Yeah, it, it's some some really rare, expensive coin, and he just received it in the mail. Yeah, he doesn't feel as if he actually earned his riches, and so um, that's an ongoing theme that that's happening in the story concerning the father and Xanatos. And there's oh, we're talking about extreme gaslight. Well, not gaslighting, but uh, anger and vitriol. Uh, towards his son it's like really <laughs> why do you have this guy here he, he hates yeah. you do, do, do you really do you really need this castle <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> I mean, he picks apart everything yeah yeah i do love it and goliath um actually it gets a soft spot because he you know he remembers his own vows that he made with Demona, and he decides to go to this thing and um, attend the wedding and be the best man, all that. And Demona is also there at the wedding, which conjures up a memory for him mm -hmm. of when he, they were both looking on to another mem um, uh, another wedding back in the 900s. And they decided at that point, you know, that they were going to be partners and they made vows to each other and they broke something called the Phoenix Gate and they both vowed to that they would keep one half of it as a pledge to the other. You know, being a romantic, uh, Goliath falls into the trap of kind of allowing Demona to get her hands on the other half of the <laughs> The He's seal like, in which it. she's like, I knew you would. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was it tucked away in his loincloth, which I thought was very interesting. Like, what else is in there? <laughs> <laughs> well, mm. <laughs> it's like saving my things. <laughs> like, pants. I thought it was pants. good. <laughs> this is where pants help because pants have pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yes and so i was like wow what is, what do you keep in there and so <laughs> apparently so do long cloths <laughs> there, there must be like a lining of just pockets in there uh, it must be yeah because it, it, it's, it's not a small item too <laughs> no 
It's huge. It's like humongous, but um... and they both just pull it out of nowhere. Yeah, <laughs> I, I want these kind of pockets that that these two have. Yeah, you <laughs> pull just gigantic things out of your pockets, and uh, and then uh, it's sort of like a dimension, another dimension of things going on there. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, so uh, when Demona gets her hands on that other half of the gate, she connects the two pieces together. And at this point, she is able to use it. And what it does is that it can transport people back in time. So any place, an, anytime, just any place, anytime. Yeah, it's wonderful. I was like, oh, I could use that. Um, so it transports them to 975 AD. And at this point, conveniently, Xanator is wearing an Illuminati pin which is spotted immediately by uh, a Northern ambassador uh, during a scuffle. He is uh, welcomed to the castle Wavern and where the princess has um, the, the Phoenix gate from that time period. So at this point, there's two Phoenix gates in existence in the same time, which I thought was really cool. Uh, Xanatos begins to mess with, uh, let's see if I can get some, uh, Yes, so this is the wedding, and here she is, uh, managed. He's like, look at that smile on his face. He's like, ah, now we can be friends again. <laughs> and he's like, uh, no, you fool. <laughs> so um, at this point in time, there's two versions of, of Demona and also mm. two versions of Goliath. The younger version of Demona is... Uh, enters a deal with Archmage, the Archmage, yes, to to steal the Phoenix Gate from yeah, it turns uh, out she's apprentice. his apprentice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's like, oh wow! So even though she's not full evil Demona that's in the present day, she is still kind of weaving her way into being that person, mm -hmm. which makes her. I would say at this point, one of the, the strongest threats that I've seen in the entire series. And I was like, wow, at this very point, she is she is super, super thre threatening because she could cause so much damage. Yeah. Um, and it, it was great because the tension was like older Demona intercepts uh, younger De uh, Demona and takes her away. But at the very same time, Goliath is no is seeing all of this go down uh, the present day Goliath and he zooms in there to kind of get himself caught in the transportation to wherever it is that they go to which is uh, I believe 1294 the, it's yeah. it's the date that evening when uh, just after the castle wyvern had gotten the attack during the day yes where it's Nine. still burning and all of the gargoyles that were there are crumbled. Yes. And actually this was after this was after the spell from the Magus was cast because Gargo because Goliath and them were there stone at night. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that is 994 AD. It was really interesting. I was looking to see exactly how that would affect younger Demona and if she would like she could stop this whole thing right now that she knows no, what's no, going to happen told her that that dude this was her fault yeah like maybe yeah it, <laughs> exactly <it they> had. <laughs> yeah and she it, it, she could have stopped this from from occurring but even knowing that this is going to happen she still does it so that kind of makes her even more culpable mm -hmm. um and um demona tells her young self not to not to share the phoenix gate and she also tells her exactly how to use it because i suppose at the time she did get her hands on it she did not know how to use it so uh, yeah, demona um it has at this point still has not been corrupted as of yet, and is is just not willing to do some of the bad things that the older Demona is telling her to do. She, she's she's bad enough to steal, right? She's bad enough mm -hmm. to steal and do some side slide slide things here and there, but she is not willing to, you know, give up 
Goliath like that. Uh, and even after seeing all the things that are going to uh, go down, it's really cool, interesting to see that the magician got pissed at her for losing the gate, which is she didn't lose it. She just shared it. And so yeah. there, she, there's once she discovered what the gate could do, uh, I think that's why she didn't give it away. I do want to point out something the Archmage mm -hmm. says, and I'm saying it for a reason. Oh. Because uh, when he was expecting the, the Phoenix Gate to come into his possession, he says, all I'm... No, once I get the Phoenix Gate, I've got the Grimoire Merkinorm, all I need is the Eye of Odin, and I'll okay. have the ultimate power. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm just highlighting that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so Just we gotta and think we're... right now or uh, by the end of this episode goliath has all three Ooh. just putting that out there yes they're so right yes because yeah he t i don't know if we mentioned that on goliath takes the eye of odin off of xanatos because it's not safe in his hands yeah, and yeah. It's one of the rare times Xanatos actually agrees. <laughs> like, yeah, get that yeah. thing out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. See, I'm glad. See, this is why I'm glad that you're able to, to pinpoint <laughs> some of this stuff out because I totally missed that. But, yeah, that would make uh, Goliath the most powerful person on um, uh, on the planet, right? And so uh, if Goliath... He knew, if he knew about the stuff in the grimoire, I'm like somebody who's probably a little more experienced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, he he just needs to know what all of these things can do. Mm -hmm. And Goliath, Goliath actually uses the gate to bring everybody back home to their own time. And so that, that was actually kind of good all, all the, the while that you guys didn't um i didn't mention that the the dad is it has been brought along with uh xanatos and co is complaining the whole time um, yes yeah, sorry um finish finish up on that knowledge oh oh, oh well I, oh no 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 go on ahead because i was just about to bring up something else yeah because when they show up after rescuing the princess Mm -hmm. and her, her thing when they first show up to castle wyvern they are rewarded with a handful of coins yes and we and xanatos gives hands off a couple packages to somebody and they run it off turns out that was an illuminati member mm -hmm. and he said the one package he had a specific date send it to young David Xanatos in 1984 or whatever it was. And that's the random coin he gets in the mail. The other yeah. one he gets like a week before the wedding telling him everything. So he's like, see dad, I am a soft made man. <laughs> he's right. He's like, and his dad is like, oh, how do we why? get home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His dad is still not impressed. He's yeah. like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it, it, that that's the fun the funniest thing I find about this dad. I mean, he, this he finds out yeah, his son, you know, no figured this whole elaborate plan out with time travel and everything, and he's still Congratulations. <laughs> You're still messed up. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Uh, do love. What does it take uh, to get a slight good job out of this guy? <laughs> I know. What do you got to do? <laughs> it's just great. Like, um, that that was a, a fun one. And also getting any, any episode where it leaves New York City, it seems almost a little bit more fun to me, it, even though I do love all the things that happen in the city. That's 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 we, always great. We are going to get a good run of outside of New York City uh -huh. coming up later in this season. Yeah. 
Yeah, because it seems like those are the times when it gets to be more magical. We get into mm -hmm. like more the magical realm and the medieval time period, that kind of stuff. That really is the home of gargoyles, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, is, is sort of the lore of it all. So I did love it so very much. Now, at the end of this episode, I... I was kind of confused if, if uh, as to the visuals because uh, <laughs> he's talking to his <laughs> yes. Oh, she looks so great. I love it, and I love it. She's look at how she's grabbing hold of her man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they had a lot of PDA uh, in this one, and he's he's all about it. So, and and this is really interesting. This was the last shot. Um, mm -hmm. And it looks like it's at the clock tower, but it isn't, is it? Is it like no. a memory or something? I, th I think it's a memory because clearly they're not going to have Demona there. No. I think it's just him r reminiscing about what was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he. there's still a lot of... Um, they they were they, they betrothed each other, Gargoyle, as we've kind of gotten the impression Gargoyle's mate for life. Yeah. At least that's the impression mm -hmm. I've gotten. So this whole thing has got to have been a little bit painful for him. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. he's eternally trying to, to bring her back over. Yeah. I mean, he has several, you know, and several episodes have been like, you know, trying to calm her down and, and talk her off the ledge. I, I think I've used that term before, mm -hmm. but she's not having it she's just embedded in this anger and animosity towards him mm -hmm. in particular blames him for everything but not willing to even see her part in all of this Narcissist. and yeah oh it's it's a heartbreaking um and heartbreaking for goliath but you know alisa is like <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> like she's there but also, she's human, and so human and gargoyle, would that ever make sense? We, It's romantic in a way, but um, also realistically, uh, it, you know, who it's, knows? it's one of those weird lines, though, but it's right up there with the whole, uh, we've seen a thousand times of, like, the human vampire fantasies and anything that was the mess that is Twilight, because I don't consider either <laughs> vampire or wearable. I'm sorry. <laughs> Underworld is another great example of interspecies. Mm, underworld. Yeah. Underworld. But, right. Yeah. It, it's, I think it that echoes something deep into the psyche of people of being attracted to something more supernatural. Mm. And I'm not entirely certain what it is, but this does seem to be a common, I don't want to quite use the word fantasy, but I don't have a, a better option right off the top of my head. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, I would say like for like werewolves, I love vampires, by the way. They're, mm. they're fantastic. I think they're like. You, you couldn't have lived niche. through the 90s without having a love for vampires. Oh, come, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on. And, uh, and I, I loved, I loved vampires for a long time, but. Um, and still do. And even like werewolves, there's sort of a mm -hmm. romantic kind of thing with werewolves. If you, you remember uh, an American werewolf in London, you know, the, uh, I mean, Michael they're Sheen. dangerous. Michael Sheen still to this day made one of my favorite werewolves. Michael I Sheen? Find... Yeah. In Underworld? Oh yes, yes, yes! And my that yeah. Michael Sheen, yes. Yeah, oh yeah, come Michael on! Sheen. Oh come my God, he, come he on, made yeah. one of my favorite werewolves to date. And <laughs> oh, he's fantastic. Michael Grievu, hit me up, okay? Oh, uh, that man has got a beautiful voice. <laughs> oh yes, he's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I think he's he's incredible and super smart and, and incredibly creative for coming up with the idea for this did love what was offered for underworld and um, i'm just really loving i love the romanticism mm -hmm. here and all that <laughs> now we've got the homework <laughs> woot woot <laughs> the homework for next week um which is um is this week five One. i think i have the date i think it's week this is week six i'm not sure 
Yeah, I'm this sure. is for <laughs> Yeah, this is for week six. I have the wrong week, yeah. but this is week six. Basically, we're doing episode nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, which is part of a four parts uh grouping. Series. Yeah. Um that they have. I don't remember whether these originally came out as one long movie. I don't think it did. Ooh. I, re I don't think it, I, I think I really, I'm 90% certain it didn't, mm -hmm. but it would have played out as, as one that could have. Been it, just a movie. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Because and again, it's that, that's four episodes. That's two hours. Ooh. Yeah, it is. It is pretty much two hours. This is the, the uh, city of stone is, is basically what it's subtitled. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I can't wait to, to see this entire, like the storyline of city of stone. It sounds already, I'm, I'm already imagining things. So I can't wait, mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't wait for that. There, there, there are things that we've seen that come into play for this whole, and that's the teaser you guys get for this oh okay <laughs> there, there are yeah, things we have seen if those I, I have highlighted some things you know throughout the various weeks they do come into play in this moment mm -hmm. for the for this series this particular mm -hmm. grouping oh i can't wait i can't mm -hmm. wait um well that will uh cover us for this week i uh, appreciate everybody for coming definitely appreciate you uh mama bear for these awesome conversations this these is really great fun. yes and and do check out mama bear's uh, uh youtube channel and uh, twitter yeah we want to support and uh give you as much um mm. love and 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 uh, attention as possible <laughs> being friends of the channel and everything <laughs> So, yes, well, uh, we're going to see you next week. Absolutely. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> I, you know, the whole time I was just smiling ear to ear. It was so good. I, um, I, I, I mean... I, I already said it, but I, I love this. I love this show. I love the show. <laughs> so, yes, we had such a good time. And again, um, I, I mentioned this in the chat. Uh, doing this with Mama Bear has been so great because um, it, there's two, two minds are better than one, right? You, there are certain things that I'm like trying to explain things and she just comes in and, and clutch and like explains the detail, which is really awesome. So, um, I'm just, I'm just loving, um, these shows. They're really, uh, definitely cool to rewatch too. Um, so, uh, let's see, I'm going to post in the chat, the homework, just in case anyone did not get a chance to to see it but it's basically city of stone which is uh four episodes they're really great um and <laughs> they're really good it says mental note i don't drink while listening to myself i'm a choking hazard <laughs> I know I I was dying laughing at so many points um and just smiling ear to ear is hilariously good and, and uh just the moments that you know of shock and like I had just seen these episodes so there's sort of like a freshness that happens when you just find see something for the first time um and uh, you don't have like weeks and weeks to mull over what you thought about something. It's like the initial thoughts. It's really cool. <laughs> and Josh says, I love these rewatch streams. It reminds me of how good this show is and underrated too. Yes, it's it's really great. Really great. I mean, I, I do love that. I do love that. Um, and uh, Thomas says, uh, uh gargoyles tells a great story it really does the writing is just incredible um and mar hoffman says this show was a great example of what you get when you write a series a single plot and divide the plot uh into episodes yeah yeah it it, it really is like they they really knew how to write these characters and the story and the story is so good uh it's wonderful and uh, oh look uh, dan candy is here hello dan how are you <laughs> oh i'm so sorry that you missed it just uh, 
rewind the whole thing start from the beginning it's it's really fun um we go over every bit of it so you don't have to actually watch the show but if you if you watch the show you'll you'll know what we're talking about it's definitely a great thing it's on disney plus and i believe that there may be some shows on uh youtube and uh is there another location that it's playing it's also playing um um mama bear where are you watching the show on let me know i forgot i i thought it was um on one of the other uh channels and um let's see yeah yeah um uh mama bear says i i i can't think of any other shows that plot things out like this show uh it's sherlock level absolutely yeah they really do uh every single like they maximized everything from season one uh, uh, like every single nook of season one was explored and now parts of season two it, we're exploring that it's just wonderful and so um i can't i'm not gonna i'm gonna keep it kind of a secret where i'm up to in um this uh this series because i don't want to ruin it for anybody but um yeah it, it we are we're gonna go through each and every one so next week city of stone uh and we'll we'll see that uh let's see Morris says i remember this show it's been 20 years but i still remember it awesome <laughs> <laughs> and uh this style of uh writing is what made babylon 5 so good so i never saw babylon 5 so i'm gonna write that down i write that down um and moonbeam says i love city of stone yes yeah, so good so good um and um uh and mama bear says i watch on a uh free streaming site and um and uh moonbeam says maybe hulu okay mars says uh jms uh had a big plan that he didn't write every script himself but he started with a plan for where to take the story before starting to write the first episode okay did not know that i did see a um an interview with uh the uh the writer creator and uh that was a fascinating uh talk that i i listened to he is very very um um uh, he's a he's a very interesting uh guy very nice uh personality and Tom tomas says um uh, I'm gonna. I'm going to listen to an inside of you interview with the young actor who stars in Terminator Two later. Oh, cool! I like that show, uh, Inside of You. It's really fun. And uh, Dan Candy says, "I watched the gun episode after your discussion. Surprisingly good. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, that that uh, that episode is very." um typical of how how they are able to get a subject matter and not make it like take it seriously but also not make it like too preachy it, it was not it was really well done very well done um this is definitely one of the most thought-provoking episodes yes yes absolutely yeah really great episode it just it's so good and <laughs> gonna get better i'll tell you that <laughs> it gets it gets even better which is fantastic oh man thank you guys for being here i really appreciate each and every one of you for for coming uh uh to the show today for staying up late and hanging out with us as we watch um these uh our little talks that we we were able to have i do love the our conversations and uh yeah it's really cool uh mama bear says uh, it's better um done than most psas at the time yes yes and i mean it is a psa but it, and it wasn't it it wasn't uh one that was waggy you know finger waggy and they know they made um you know they were good at getting everybody kind of like hey it was it was this person's fault but it was also this person's fault and and it was like 
it's like, oh, the blame it doesn't go all on one person. Uh, it go it spreads around. So really cool. And oh, Joe is here. Hello. Uh, it says, woo, I hope I, you enjoyed the, your Adams Family gift. I did. I did. It's wonderful. Where Where is it? Right here. It's right here. Look. Oh, thank you so much, Joe. You're awesome. I, I did get it in the mail. And so I can't wait to um, to crack it open and watch it. <laughs> and uh, well, it says, 30 years for me, I watched Gargoyles when it aired in 1994 to its conclusion in 1997. Ooh, so you know all the secrets. Okay, don't tell us all the secrets. <laughs> there, I know there's like so many secrets to the story. So don't don't tell us. We wanna we want to um, be surprised when we see all the secrets. And uh, uh, Thomas says, I remember in the early 90s for TMNT, X-Men, Gargoyles, and Jurassic Park. Oh, really? I didn't, I didn't know. Now, I, I definitely watched the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, but I, I believe when I did, it was the 80s version, which I think was a little bit different. Um, I, I didn't quite catch the X-Men very much, so I'll have to, I'll have to one day watch those. And, uh. Uh, Jurassic Park, I never did get to see. And uh, and Joe says, yes. <laughs> and um, Mama Bear says, as we go through this, I'm rewatching it for the first time since the 90s. So everything you see me mentally pulling up is from that long ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, it, it's really great um, that, you know, we're, we're kind of tag teaming this because there's no way to do <laughs> one thing and you, you're the things that you mention and you bring up are just so great. Um, and so, and Thomas says, uh, uh, plenty of great things, but I love those as a kid. Oh, you did. Okay. Well, that's so sweet. I, you know, for me as a kid, it was Voltron. It was, uh, Voltron was like my favorite favorite. Um, Thundercats, <laughs> Thundercats were really great. Um, all of the Warner Brothers cartoon stuff that was all awesome. You know, Bugs Bunny, all those guys. Uh, what else? Um, I I didn't get a chance to really get into. Um, G.I. Joe, but G.I. Joe came on and I, I would just watch a few episodes and I, I, and I always liked them and Transformers too, but I didn't get into, into them. But um, yeah, Voltron was my jam. I just love Voltron. That was my thing. And, uh, and Mars says, uh, <laughs> must resist the urge to post spoilers. Thank you for doing that. Yes, <laughs> Mama Bear says that to me the entire time. And Dan Kennedy says, uh, did you watch the Batman animated series? No, I, I didn't. Uh, I was I was a working girl at that time. <laughs> I was working and going to school and uh, trying to figure out what I was going to do with the rest of my life. And I had no clue back then, you know, uh, and, and, um, uh, Thomas, uh, says I watched both versions of, uh, TMNT and the films. Oh yeah. I watched those too. I watched, I watched all, I watched all the cartoons. Um, the ones I watched were mostly from the eighties though, but I didn't, the nineties one I would catch every once in a while. But I watch the movies. Definitely watch the movies. I love the movies. Um, and Mama Bear says, uh, generally with cartoons, I've seen it. <laughs> and uh, Donna says, Batman the Animated Series is my favorite Batman. Oh, cool. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't um, get into the Batman series. Um, I, I just, I saw it like, you know, in the peripher perif peripheral, I guess. I, I was more into like Powerpuff Girls, Totally Spies, because um, I think they were on Adult Swim, and so I watched 
and all the stuff that was on Adult Swim I watched. Was, uh, let's see. William says I own Thundercats and Voltron DVD. Yes. <laughs> now, do you have Go Lions, the Go Lions series, which is the original Japanese Voltron? Oh, my God. That is insane. I saw that one time. Um, and it is so, like it is so different. It is so different. It basically, um, Prince Lotor is like a complete psycho. It's a complete psycho. <laughs> it's a he's a complete like murderous psycho. Insane. It was great. <laughs> I'm glad I saw that when I got older, and uh, not that for the you know the Voltron was like the 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 nice one that I saw. There was also a continuation of Voltron, which was um, uh, it was like a galaxy Voltron galaxy something, and and that was okay, but I it, it didn't have the core characters like I wanted them to have, um, and I was like, it's not the same without the core characters. Oh, versus Batman, X Men, Justice League, Gargoyles are my '90s favorites. Ooh, um, and uh, movie says no spoilers. Yes, no spoilers. <laughs> and uh, Dan Candy says retro. You have to watch Batman. I I will. I will eventually one day. I will. <sighs> and uh, Thomas says uh, I love Snake Eyes in the GI Joe cartoon. Yes, that was actually one of my favorite characters and i did like him in the movie as well and i was really disappointed that the movie didn't really um uh, well i like the movie but i i really wanted them to continue on with it like a little bit stronger than they did um wasn't really the movies were not as good as the cartoon but i really liked um the Baron, the Baroness. Uh, she was she was so cool. I loved her. Uh, uh, yeah, I wanted to be the Baroness. <laughs> Mom says she actually she she absolutely needs to watch Batman. And Mara Hawkman says the best Transformers episode ever was when Starscream actually joins uh, Team Autobot. It's incredibly emotional. You see just how. Much it's eating at him inside. Oh, wow. Uh, that's one thing I love about these, uh, you know, these are cartoons, but they really put in such um, detail into these characters. Uh, Mohawkman says, but he's sliding, uh, he's siding with his sworn enemies because the other alternative is worse. Mm. Uh, and says, I love that Transformers run. Oh, wow. And Moonbeam says, 1992, Kevin Conroy was one of the best. Wow. Yeah, I, I heard that he's he was incredible. What I've seen so far, though, of stuff, he was it was really great. Uh, and Mama Bear says, Beast Wars was great. And uh, Mar Hawkman says, Voltron really sold the bad guys as uh, uh, being bad guys. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, they were bad. But if you think that they're bad, <laughs> if you think that they're bad, go lion. Ah, uh, they're really bad. <laughs> like, they are really bad in go lion. Ooh, I was like, ouch. <laughs> they were like destroying worlds. They were enslaving worlds and and and, and destroying them. Wow. Um. Yeah, uh, Thomas says, uh, but I also watched Pokemon and enjoyed the games. Still do. Oh, cool. Um, and uh, <laughs> over here says, don't, don't let us get another series started. Yes. Well, we'll, we'll do some. We'll definitely, we are looking at different options for what's next. But we got a long way to go before <laughs> With this one. And Moonbeam says, I saw Go Lion in Japan. I had the action figure for the robot, but I own the 1984 anime. So cool, Moonbeam. Yes. Um, the, the, that 
that show was, I will never forget it. I'll never forget it. How uh, amazing the storyline was. I, I, it's just so different. And, um, Donna says, Ironside is my favorite. Uh, I'm oh, sorry. Ironhide is my favorite transformer. And it's been a while, but, um, yeah, I have not seen uh, the uh, that. Uh, I can't. I can't remember Iron's uh, hide. Uh, <laughs> I need to get bone up on my transformers. And Mama Bear says you make a good Baroness. Oh, thank you. I lo I think she's so cool. Um, I just wanted. I wanted her to do more bad. At, you know, like I wanted her to really get like into it. Um, and. Uh, I, I did love that she was, I think she was played by, oh gosh, help me out. Who played her? Um, and, and it was really, she was blonde, she's blonde. And then with the black hair, it really makes her look like so like sleek and cool. Um, and uh, uh, Boombie says Baroness is an uh, awesome G.I. Joe character, right? I think so. I think she is. I, I always like that character. And Joe says, I remember there being a Gargoyles board game that came out with a VHS that plays while you play the game. It was epic. What? <laughs> that sounds cool. And uh, Joe says, well, if you've seen the last Transformers, you'll see what's coming. I didn't see the last Transformers. <laughs> I didn't see it. The only Transformer I think of I've, I've seen is a uh, uh transformers something extinction uh days of extinction or something like that and i was like oh this <laughs> it was so much i think my poor little mind was like what's happening <laughs> um <laughs> and mama versus uh conroy is my top batman yeah for some people that's the 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 only like that's the gold standard um and he was so amazing uh, and uh, I didn't get to experience it all. I'm sure I will one day, but um, he's he's definitely one that a lot of people love. And there were a lot of people were talking about him, how much, um, you know, when he passed, how how devastated they were and how they loved him. So and Dan Candy says, did you ever watch Star Blazers or Robotech? Maybe they were a little before your time. Star Blazers. I don't think they were before my time. <laughs> I definitely don't think they were before my time. But I may not have watched them. Let me uh, let me look it up and see. Star Blazers. Star Blazers. Oh, nineteen seventy nine. Yeah, I've seen these guys. I didn't get a chance to like watch a lot of this show. Um, right. Um, this is like this is a uh, Yamato, right? I I've I've seen it off and on in life throughout my entire life, but I've never really gotten a chance to enjoy this show. Um they're what else? And Robotech. Robotech, no, I didn't get a chance to, but uh, Robotech. Just to get a sense of Robotech. Um, 1985. No, I, I, I was in too into like other stuff. For sure. <laughs> for sure, sure, sure. I was definitely into other stuff. I don't think that, like, regionally, I don't think it was in my region either. I don't think it was in my region. Because I don't know about you, but, um, like, certain regions didn't get everything. Um, and uh, Moonbeam says, I love the chemistry between Baroness and Destro. Me too, yeah. And uh, Mama Bear Arthur says, Robotech rings a bell. Star Blazers doesn't. Uh, I'll check them out. You know what I did love? And let me see if I can remember. Galaxy Rangers. Oh, oh, Galaxy Rangers. Oh, let me find. Okay, so I always, <laughs> you guys have got me in a, in a, like a little mood right now. Uh, the opening for Galaxy Rangers is just insanely good. 
a very cheesy and um, super, super fun and addictive. <laughs> So I'm gonna, I'm gonna track it down for you. And hopefully you guys won't um, be like <laughs> playing it over and over and over again. Copy link address. Here it is. Nice. Does anybody know what the name of like the next group of Voltron was? It was like, it was like there was Voltron and then there was another one where they were in a different galaxy. Every once in a while, the two of them would come together. I, I forgot the name of that one. Um, but yeah, I love, love myself. Uh, what? You had a gold lion coloring book oh my god that is so cool <gasps> so cool um <laughs> mama Bear says before my time doesn't um matter to me i've watched honey uh and basco oh what's that i never heard of that one and um dan candy says they're both american dubs of japanese animes Oh, for the uh, for the Robotech and the uh, Star Blazers. Okay, uh, Age of Extinction. Yes, that's the one that I saw. Um, not my fa not my favorite movie, but it was it was a movie. <laughs> it was a movie. I I can respect it. I respect um, creativity of all forms and shapes. And Moonbeam says Baroness was voiced by Morgan Lofting. Very cool. And um. Um, says, I think she means the G.I. Joe movie with Channing Tatum. Oh, was he in that movie? Yes, Sienna Miller. Yes, you're right. You're so right. Yeah, that's who it was. And she was so beautiful. She was hot. <laughs> I was like, you know, I guess they had her like do, I'm not sure if she pretended she was a blonde in the movie. Or I know that she was a real, like a blonde in the movie um yeah she she looked so cool i was like dang that's that's the baroness they captured her but they i i would have loved just a story about the baroness you know that's how i feel about the baroness <laughs> like who are these other people i just love the baroness <laughs> they're going and dan candy says they used to sit uh in the mornings and uh watch them before the school bus picked me up. Oh, so cool. And, um, they aired in the mornings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I figured, I figured that. And, uh, I enjoyed the first five, uh, first live action Transformers the best. I saw the pre screening of it and got a cool Transformers t shirt. So cool. And, uh, uh, says that was fun. And Moonbeam um, says there was a car Voltron. Oh, I didn't know that. I re I had always wanted the five lion go set. Uh, you know, five lions and you put them all together and it and it forms the big robot. Uh, that was my dream as a kid. Never got it. <laughs> Never got it. I also wanted a um. Uh, uh I wanted a, a Star Wars set. Probably most likely a um, Millennium Falcon, um, and I never got that either. But you know, as a kid growing up, you just uh, you live somehow, even though you don't get what you want. And Dan Candy says, "Yes, Star Wars Blazers uh, in Japanese spaceship uh, battle uh, Yam Yamato and Robotech was Macross." Oh, okay. Oh, that makes sense. And um, Mama Bear says, Honey and Basco were the original WB char uh, cartoon characters pre-existing to Porky Pig. Okay. 
And Honey of Basco is the old Looney Tunes cartoon. Uh, they featured the and they were featured in the episode of Tiny Toon Adventures: Fields of Honey. Interesting. So cool. You know who? What I love now, though, are the um, uh, what do they call them? Um, Teen Titans Go. The but the the funny little ones. Um. The ones that they have now, um, I think they're still it's still airing now. And oh my god, the, I I think I sat down one day and watched a whole bunch of episodes and just laughed myself. Just just laughed myself the whole the whole evening was like ah, it just it was just yuck yucks all night. It was sick. I loved it. <laughs> okay well guys i think this is it i better get going um the next thing on the menu um for live streams is um we're doing um let's see let's see if i can figure it out uh next one is oh this saturday labyrinth watch party um, we're going to be doing that this Saturday. And then um, I will be also. <laughs> oh, this is I struggle with tea Titans go. Uh, I, yeah, for me, I think they're just hilarious. I, I, I don't try to put them in any kind of um, <laughs> world. Because if you think of them as like a, uh, a, a actual world or actually connected to anything, it's just like um no, just, <laughs> they're just for they're they're like the new Looney Tunes is, is all I can think of. Um oh thank you Dan you are so kind thank you so much for your Voltron <laughs> Voltron fund start saving up I will thank you. <laughs> Oh man. Oh, okay. So I have a thank you for you. Let's do this one. Oh, thanks. Oh, thank you so very much. Okay, I'm going to get going now, guys. I, I think might be running a smidge late here, but um, I, some of you are already piling out the door, we, and that's what we'll do. Um, and uh, But Joe says, uh, Henson stuff is my favorite next to Jan Jurassic Park and Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, awesome, awesome. Uh, and so, yes. Um, okay, so I'm going to get going. I'm going to hit the um, the button to, let me just go back here. Um, so uh, before we do that, I want to do this. Okay. Yeah, I want to do this really quickly, just so that way you guys can have um, a look at the next week's. There we go. <laughs> yes, I, I I finally figured it out. Uh, I finally figured it out. So I'll be, I'll, I'll see you guys next, uh, next time, next week uh, with the, this is the homework for next week. And for those of you who are going to join me uh, for the watch party this Saturday, uh, I will see you then. And um, uh, let's see. Let's see if I can get this. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm a little bit, uh, there we go. 
I'm I'm gonna play it. I will see you next time. Bye bye. Retro Nerd Girl, you are clear for takeoff.